Hello, it's Keith Appleton here from the north of England. It's grim up north and here I am rebuilding a Stuart Models twin Victoria steam engine. I've called the series Rebuilding, but looking at it I don't think this engine's ever been finished. It's certainly never run. As an overview, the engineering standard's pretty good. The parts are very well made and quite well finished. All the tool marks have been removed and it has the makings of a very good engine. But having said that, I've not been inside the engine yet. I'm hoping that the internal parts of the engine look as well as the external parts. The first thing that's apparent with this engine is that the main bearings are not split units and there's a little bit of play on them as you can see here. So I have the choice of whether to make these into split bearings or just bush them. The main steam inlet is a bit of a bizarre construction. It's far too long and it's not threaded far enough down into the T-piece. This is an easy fix, I'll get to that in due course. Either way I'll be setting up each side of the engine individually before I pipe them together with a common steam inlet pipe. The flywheel grooves are a little bit chattery but this is quite a difficult thing to machine on a small lathe. I might have a look at that in due course. This is two standard flywheels for a Victoria gang together. When I rotate this flywheel and do bear in mind there's only one side of the engine fastened to it, there's a really bad tight spot. No matter what I do, no matter where I move the bed plate, it's got a tight spot. So this will need looking into. As neither of these engines are fastened to the bed plate and never have been, there is a possibility that the crankshaft is bent. Already I think I'm committed to pulling this engine right down to its component parts and starting again. Just look at the crosshead. This is a joke. There are clearly packing washers underneath the crosshead top guide bar. So this leads me to believe that maybe the cylinder is not in line with the crosshead. And the noise would be unbelievable if the engine was actually running with the crosshead this slack. Not to mention the fact it's a twin so there are two crossheads that would be clacking in unison. I've turned the engine around and you can see here that the crank web's not the right way around at all. Someone's taken the trouble with this engine to taper the guide bars and it looks quite nice. They've made a bit of a mistake by drilling the lower guide bar. This is all simple stuff though and very easy to rectify. The play on the crosshead at this side of the engine makes the other side look okay. And you can clearly see washers underneath both ends of the slide bar. This is no good at all and as I said earlier I'm quite concerned about this. At this stage as a rough guess I would think that the slide bars are not in the right place to start with. Other things on this engine are pretty good. The brackets that hold the cylinders are very well made. And the cylinders seem to be quite well machined externally. Can't comment until I get inside them to see what the bores are like. It looks to me like the builder of this engine actually had some skill, but lost his way during the build. I see this quite a lot. People seem to get fed up of building engines and rush the last parts, start off very well, then mess up at the end. When it comes to fitting the parts together that you've made for an engine, if the parts aren't made well enough, then the builder's going to have to bodge it when he puts the engine together. Have a look at this, you'll see what I mean. I somehow get the impression on this engine that more than one builder was probably involved, because the meticulous painstaking finish on the cylinders is not duplicated on the main bearings, and they're not even split. Split main bearings make it possible to adjust the main bearings to take up any wear, and that's what's shown on the original Stuart drawing. This video is called Examination and Diagnosis. I'm not really going to cover fully pulling the engine from together in one video, but I need to have a closer look. So I've removed one side of the engine, and now the flywheels come off the crankshaft, and I can already see some ultraviolence on the eccentric. This will need looking at. I would think there's something a bit wrong there, or maybe the builder just lost his temper, I don't know. My first findings show that the eccentric is quite firmly stuck on this shaft. It must be a tight fit, so I'll have to look at that. To finish this video, I'll have a quick look at the baseboard. It's pretty rough, really. I think maybe a new one may be in order. There are some names and dates underneath this baseboard, as you can see here. I don't know who these people are, but they look like they're from the same family. Maybe Jack Holdsworth was the builder. I don't know. To finish this first video, I'd just like to say to prospective steam engine builders, never ever use doll's house wallpaper to cover your baseboard. As you can see here, the oil gets straight into it and makes it look horrendous.
as well as making it look like a doll's house roof. Here are the parts ready for further inspection. That's about it for now, so all I've got to say is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. More to come.